Hi, this is Risa and welcome back to my Stitch Along series. This video accompanies the kit review I've done of Lorna Bateman's scissor stand and needle minder. I'm going to walk you through both the stitching and the crafting process. So let's begin. The first thing to do is to trace the outline for the scissor band on the muslin cloth that is included in the kit. And I'm using a heat erasable pen here and I'm just using a light pad to be able to see the outline that is provided in the instructions. Now I'm going to lay the fabric with the pattern that's printed on it over the light pad as you can see here and overlay the muslin cloth with the tracing on it and sort of try and place the pattern in the center of that outline. And so once I've sort of placed it correctly with the tips of the pattern facing in the right direction, that is towards the tip of that outline, I'm going to run simple running stitches along the outline that I've drawn. Now I've mounted my six inch hoop onto an embroidery stand and I'm using two strands of green floss to start stitching stem stitches for the stems of the rambling rose here. Just ensure that when you stitch stem stitches, make sure you bring the needle out always on the same side of the thread. So in this case, I am inserting and taking out the needle on the right side of the thread. That way you get an even look along the stem. I'm going to stitch the rosebuds next and I'm going to iron the ribbons before I start stitching. I'm going to cut out a length about the width of this hoop stand here and I'm going to cut it at a diagonal here to be able to insert it in the needle after ironing. So I'm going to use number 20 needle as you can see insert it one end fold at the other and insert the needle in the center to create a little knot before you start. Now to create the rose buds, I'm starting with French knots with two loops as you can see and simple ribbon stitches first, one in the center with the darker shade of the pink and I'm going to stitch the other French knots as well with the same darker shade of pink. So this is just going to give it that nice depth. Uh, in the center and then I will switch to the lighter shade of the pink ribbon to stitch the side petals. Now here I'm just going to swap between the darker and the lighter shade of pink. Here I'm using the lighter shade as you can see for both the French knot and the petals and so you can use your own artistic wish as to how you want to alternate between the two ribbons that are in the kit.
Now to end off, you may have noticed that I just cut off little tails by inserting the ribbon between the muslin and the main fabric. And when you've finished all the ribbon work, make sure you stitch these tails to the muslin with a thread. Now I'm going to stitch the bumblebees. Here I'm just inserting straight stitches, about three or four with black and then two strands of yellow for the stripes and using the shiny thread and stitching a chain stitch or detached chain stitch for the wings. Now I'm going to finally stitch the leaves and these are done by simple ribbon stitches as you can see. Um, like in the case of the roses, you just insert the needle in the center of the ribbon and make sure you don't pull right through so you get a nice little tip. Now for the roses itself, you can stitch side ribbon stitches onto either side of the rosebuds. Here I'm going to stitch a detached chain stitch around this little rosebud that I have stitched with a French knot. And you can see that it kind of nicely covers sort of a baby rosebud. I'm going to do the same here. So that's another way of uh, stitching the leaves around these little rosebuds. Now that the embroidery work is done, I'm going to stitch the band for the scissor stand. I'm going to use that extra cloth that was in the kit. I'm going to pin the right sides to each other. Well, essentially put the cloth over the right side of the embroidery work and I'm going to remove the tag lines that I had used to stitch the muslin onto the main fabric. And instead I'm going to tag that extra cloth to the embroidery work. And as you can see, I am working on the back of the embroidery work here. I'm using a sewing machine to make it faster for me to stitch uh, 
this band here, but you can hand stitch it by using back stitch along the lines and the effect will be the same. I've done that before, before I owned a sewing machine. Make sure that you stitch on all of the sides here, except for the bottom. Leave that open because you'll need to turn the cloth around when it's done. Now here you can see that I have the tag lines that I will need to remove, otherwise when I turn it right side up, you'll have those stitch lines that will be shown and I don't want that. Um, so once I'm done, I am going to cut off close to the seam line, about two millimeters, maybe three millimeters, um, and then smooth off the edges so that when I turn the cloth over right side up, um, I get a nice line. Now, turning it is going to be a bit tight. I found that difficult to do, so I used a ru ruler here to push the cloth through. Now make sure you push under the muslin work, or under the embroidery work, and then keep pushing until you get a clean edge. Uh, and finally, I've ironed it here, so I got a nice clean edge. Now I'm going to finish it. Now before I do that, I'm going to just wrap it around the spool here to sort of mark out where I need to sort of cut off the ends and where I need to stitch sort of the ribbon that will be used to tie it together. I'm going to stitch the end uh, by stitching blind stitches here and essentially I'm going to use a single strand of sewing thread, white sewing thread, to stitch it and you can see it's called a blind stitch because you take a little bit of cloth from either side of the two folds and then you stitch in between as you can see you don't pierce the two front fabrics and so you don't see the stitch lines. I'm going to use Palestrina stitch to stitch an edging around the band here and I'm going to start at this end here. I'm going to use all six strands of the white thread that is in the kit and I'm going to use the longest length of the thread so I don't have to break the stitching uh, in the middle. Now I'm going to try and hide that knot right here underneath. So as you can see I've inserted the needle in between the two folds. I'm going to tuck that little knot inside. That's all going to be hidden by the Palestrina stitch. Now as you can see my stitch is on the top of the line here and to stitch the Palestrina stitch I am going to enter from the top of the line to the bottom of the line, like so, there, and I'm going to pull the needle under the thread, and then I'm going to insert the needle without inserting it in the cloth, just under the stitch there. And then, as you can see, there is a little bit of a gap or a Y shape here between the two threads. And I'm going to insert the needle again in between those two arms and have an over the thread and then pull it through to form a little knot. So let's do that again. Insert the needle equidistance, mind you, so you get a nice even look from over the line to under the line. So let's do that again. Make sure you sort of take in the same amount of uh, cloth 
Now I'm going to insert the needle under this thread without inserting it or piercing the cloth. And now insert once again between the two arms here and over that thread that's lying at the bottom. And that forms a nice little knot and I'm going to continue stitching in this way. Moving on to the needle minder, I'm going to mark out about half an inch around the circle or the embroidery work and that's going to give me the border for the needle minder. I'm going to use a friction heat erasable pen here, although cloth is going to be folded over the button so you're not going to really see it. Um, once I've cut it out, I am going to then cut out the muslin very close to the embroidery work, um, making sure I don't cut any of the embroidery work that's been done. Now I'm going to use the little button that was in the kit. As you can see, there's a magnet there, and I am going to pull the cloth over the jagged edge of that bit, and I'm going to pull it and sort of attach that cloth onto those little teeth there. And as you can see, it sort of holds quite well. So just gonna smooth it out and make sure there are no kinks on the edges. So keep pulling until all of it is nice and neatly attached, as you can see here. So now once that's all attached, I am going to plug in the back of that button for the needle minded. A little bit of force and pushing is required to get that done. And here we have it, the needle minder is done. You can put the magnet at the bottom and it's pretty strong. It sort of cap catches um, needles and pins pretty well. Isn't it just an adorable kit? Look at the design. I just love it. I can't wait to put my scissor in the scissor stand and use the needle minder. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification buttons to see more of my videos. See you again next time. Bye bye.